Good evening, everyone. It is 6.30 p.m. and we certainly want to welcome you to Seattle Public Schools virtual community meeting. This meeting is concerning the 2022 school levies. Tonight, I am your host. My name is Bev Redmond your new Chief of Public Affairs. So welcome this evening. We hope you've had a great day and we are here to serve you and provide you with some key information. We'll continue to admit folks as they certainly arrive, but we want to keep on our schedule tonight. As we're advancing the slide, to talk about our ground rules and other information, please know that your participation tonight is incredibly valued. The meeting is also going to be recorded, so if someone wanted to attend but could not, there will be another opportunity to, to gain some information by watching the recording. One of our basic ground rules, and we believe that you're certainly of mutual mind, that we conduct ourselves with civility, we have respect for others, and we believe that that is a partnership that we're engaging in tonight. All of our attendees as guests tonight, during the presentations, you are muted and your cameras are down. However, during the question and answer period, when we get toward the end, we will certainly be calling on you, but know that the chat is available to you. Tonight, we're gonna to focus on answering the questions and taking comments that are presented or on the information that is presented. We know that you have a lot of thoughts, a lot of concerns about a myriad of issues, but tonight we are here to discuss the levies, but there are other ways that you can certainly get your questions answered if you're not hearing your topic discussed tonight. There is Let's Talk. There is a form that you can put your input in at any point in time if you go straight to www.seattleschools.org slash levies. Again, Let's Talk is a form that is available to you by going to www.seattleschools.org slash levies. We're going to be here for about an hour in conversation and we will end at 7.30. However, if we happen to wrap earlier and there are no additional questions, we will certainly return your evening to you because we know you have other things to do. So again, we are having a conversation, engagement in a respectful manner, and certainly believe everyone is of like mind tonight. If we can go on to the agenda. The presentation, just running down a few things that you can expect before we get to that question and answer period. The presentation is certainly regarding the planning for the school levies. Within that category, we'll be discussing school funding, educational programs and the operations levy, or what we call EP&O, and the BTA V capital levy. And then we will open it up for questions and answers. Again, that chat is available to you, even while your camera is down and you are muted, that chat is available and we will be surfacing those questions and making sure that you get your answers tonight. So without any further ado, I am going to hand over the session as I take down my own camera and mute and take a look at the chat as we're going along and hand over the microphone, the presentation to JoLynn Bird. She is SPS's chief of financial, she's our chief financial officer and she has a great deal of information to share. So JoLynn, the floor is yours. Thank you, Bev. Welcome everyone. It's great to see so many people in attendance tonight. So I'm going to give you a little bit of information about K-12 funding, both at the statewide level and in Seattle. And then I'll provide some information specific to the EP&O or the operations levy um, as we generally call it. So first, school districts are funded both through state, local and federal dollars. And you'll see on a slide that's coming up in just a moment that uh, those local dollars from local levies are the second largest funding source that we have. And that's pretty typical. Our uh, revenue stream and the percentages that we have in Seattle are mirrored by districts across the state. So every three years, and again, this is pretty typical for districts, every three or four years, we are on a three-year cycle in Seattle. Districts ask our voters to renew, consider renewing the operations levy which is a local um, education property tax. So what's important to know about our education um, at levy in Seattle 
is that all of those dollars do stay in Seattle. There's a statewide property tax, those dollars um, go across the state, but our local levy is just that, is for Seattle Public Schools. And local levies, uh, which you may or may not be aware, the state provides very little funding for technology and very little funding for construction and building improvements. So levies really are districts and our Seattle specifically main way of funding those two areas. So on the next slide, uh, this does show what we're anticipating this year. So this is from our budget book. And you can see that for school year 21-22, the state is providing almost 60% of our revenue overall, but the next largest area are local taxes, which is the component from the levy. And that equals 15% of our expected revenue for 21-22. And then in third place is the federal dollars that we receive from the federal government. Moving on to the next slide. A little bit more about SPS school levies. So our property tax levies do have to be approved by the voters. And we have two levies that are actually up for renewal. And we are on a three-year cycle, as I had mentioned, in Seattle. So every three years, we ask the voters to approve the operations levy. And then what comes with the operations levy is one of the capital levies. And those um, switch years. So in February 2022, we'll be asking voters to support a levy um, we'll be asking voters to vote on a levy, I should say, that supports uh, critical day-to-day -day operations not funded by the state, and that is the EP&O levy, otherwise known as the, um, it may, you may have also heard it referred to as the enrichment levy, and then one to support technology and school building improvements. So that levy coming up in February 2022 is the BTA for the building technology and academics athletics and then um, in three years from then we offset that with the operations levy along with the bex levy so they alternate so again in february 2022 two levies on the ballot one is the operations levy the other will be for what's known as bta5 so renewing levies does um, provide super critical funding for our students, schools, and staff. We have some examples of that um, coming up on the next slide. So before we get there, we're going to talk just a little bit about how Seattle school taxes compared to other districts. So we're fortunate in the Seattle School District to have a lot of business uh, property, and that helps our tax rates be the best in the region. So we have the lowest rates per thousand, and you can see that for the 2021 uh, tax rate, we are at $1.84 per thousand. And you can see districts around us, you can see Bellevue at $2.59 per thousand, all the way up to Highline at $4.50 per thousand. So just um, a way to look at what those rates are across our region and know that Seattle has the lowest rate per thousand. On the next slide. So here's where we're gonna go into a little bit more about the educational programs and the operations levy renewal. So that is that three-year levy. Um, it really does help us ensure that every student has the appropriate access to tools and resources that they need to succeed. And we're going to give you some really specific examples about some things that levy the levy does provide. So it does bridge the gap between what the state's funding and what we really um, need in Seattle. So it may surprise you or maybe it doesn't surprise you to know that the child nutrition program or our school lunch program, um, we have run a deficit. So the state nor the federal government provide enough funding to run that program completely. And so the levy backfills the difference between what the state and the federal government provides. We also um, buy more counselors and, so, and more social workers with our levy to support social emotional health. And the levy pays for almost half of the special education program for Seattle Public Schools. Uh, likewise, we have some um, teacher pay that is also supported by the levy and um, again, additional mental health counselors. Uh, other programs that the levy is, is paying for are STEM and CTE programs, some of our uh, maritime programs, our skill center programs, 
as well receive funding from the levy. And then student athletics, music, and some other extracurricular activities are also funded um, at a smaller amount um, out of the operations levy. On the next slide, so now we're down to the examples. So you may have heard in the past that um, McCleary, as the education um, bill has been known in Washington State, that McCleary is fully funded. And McCleary did make a big step forward, but there are still some gaps. And we can clearly articulate and outline those, and here are some examples. So for example, the state funds nine nurses, nine, for our 50,000 students, and we employ 68 nurses. Um, so, and even that number, we still have room to grow because we have 104 schools. We really need 104 nurses. Uh, so that's a goal that we're working towards, and that number, actually, the number that we employ in nurses each year has been going up for the last few years, uh, and this is an area that we continue to ask the legislature to improve. On the next slide, custodians. So now with COVID, more important than, than ever is cleaning our buildings. Um, the state is funding 219 custodians. That takes care of over 3,200 um, classrooms, and we employ 408 custodians. So again, another specific example, and Seattle's not alone in these numbers. This is very typical for a school to have uh, very little nursing support, not enough nursing support compared to what they have, we have to employ. And again, in most districts, it's a similar situation with custodians. On the next slide, special education. We have about 7,600 special education students um, that attend Seattle Public Schools. We have both federal and state mandates to meet those needs as well as, well as a moral obligation to provide those students um, with their education. The state currently is providing $82 million, uh, and then our current budget is just over $180 million for that program. Next slide. So I'll just talk about uh, the financial summary for the ep and levy. So we uh, will put on the ballot an amount of about $646 0.8 million dollars that's collected over the three years of the life of the levy. We are estimating that rate at 74 cents per thousand. So it's part of the dollar 84 that's included. We have a rate in there right now, so this would replace the rate in the dollar 84 rate. Um, it'll still be right around the same amount. So one thing I do want to talk about is <clears throat> districts always build in some capacity into their levy rate and we've done the same thing for this one so right now the current amount that the state law would allow us to collect is 63 cents per thousand however we have built in another 11 cents because the levy is capped at three thousand dollars per student and so if your enrollment grows you want to be able to have um, a collection amount approved by your voters that allows you to go ahead and collect for those additional students so there is capacity built into our levy for enrollment growth and there's some capacity also built in for um, state changes in in the law so there are changes that the legislature makes every year or two to levy laws and if that would allow us to collect um, more levy dollars for our students um, we don't we build in a small amount of capacity so that we don't have to go back out to the voters that it's that it's a one-time ask. And we've been very fortunate that our, our taxpayers have been extremely generous in the past, and uh, we've been very successful in our levies. I just wanna say that we only collect what the state allows, we only collect what our enrollment actually is. So the amount that we ask voters to approve is a maximum, and then we collect up to what our actual numbers and law would allow. On the next slide, I believe at this point, I'll be handing it off to my colleague, Richard Best, who is our Director of Capital Projects. So Richard, good to see you, over to you. Thank you, Jolyn. So I would like to, um, uh, uh, Jen, if we go to the next slide. 
I'd like to start with differentiating between the BECs and BTA levies. As Jolyn noted, the um, levies uh, run for a six-year cycle every three years. Our BECs levies are levies that focus on the replacements of schools, the major modernizations of schools, um, while our BTA levies focus on systems replacements, upgrades to our mechanical system, boiler replacements, uh, electrical service upgrades, and also roof replacements. So there's a, a the the, BEC, the BTA levies are much smaller uh projects than the uh, bex levies are um, seattle public schools has 104 schools and we have approximately 10 million square feet of uh, facilities that we need to maintain of the 104 schools 40 are landmarked our oldest school is bf day elementary school which was built in 1889 and our newest school uh, is Wing Luke Elementary School that opened in April of 2021. Next slide, please. Of, um, as noted, the building technology and academics levy focuses on building systems. And for our building systems, we have an outside third party consultant that prepares a report for us um, once every six years. No doubt you've heard um, previous mention of a, a report in 2014 known as the Ming Analysis Report. And in 2020, we had Cezanne um, provide a report about our uh, building uh, facilities conditions. We use this information um, to inform us as to which projects should be included in the BTA capital levies generally systems that are included in the BTA-5 capital levies are in poor condition or at the end of their useful life. We also have a third-party cost estimator who identifies the cost to replace these systems and we assign priorities to every project that we are proposing to um, the voters of, of the City of Seattle within Seattle Public Schools geographical boundaries. In addition, the BTA levy includes uh, needs for technology. It includes academic and athletic field improvements. I would note as part of the high school bell time uh, revisions implemented several years ago now, Seattle Public Schools made a commitment as part of the environmental impact statement, um, the programmatic environmental impact statement for the bell time changes to provide additional field lighting at our secondary schools. Uh, we have fulfilled that commitment at our high schools. BTA-5 has some projects uh, that we've identified for our middle schools to provide um, athletic field lighting. Um, as part of BTA-5, we'll be recommending all of our BTA or uh, Priority 1 uh, projects um, uh, to the school board to be included in that capital levy. Next slide, please. In addition, uh, we will be um, uh, proposing that we replace Memorial Stadium. Memorial Stadium was built prior to 1950 um, and is in need of um, seismic upgrades, ADA upgrades, and a replacement facility is actually less costly than renovating the existing Memorial Stadium. As part of this project, we'll also be replacing the athletic field turf on the, the, the field and the um, existing metal halide lights going to a more energy efficient LED lighting system that will also reduce uh, night glare for those residents who live in the Queen Anne neighborhood. Um, in addition to Memorial Stadium, we do have an, an additional project proposed at John Muir Elementary School to build a small early learning center of uh, four classrooms to help uh, those students um, be successful at reading at grade level by third grade. Next slide. And then our building systems, uh, and, and building and system improvements, Approximately $150 million is identified for building system uh, improvements. 
and we try to have our building system improvements on a replacement schedule. That replacement schedule varies depending on type of a system that uh, we are talking about, playground equipment. Generally, we are trying to replace every 15 years. Uh, we began this effort with the BEX-5 capital levy are going to be including playgrounds going forward on a 15 year replacement schedule. Roofs are on a 30 year replacement schedule. Boilers are on a, a 20 year replacement schedule. So you can see that we have a sequence for when systems need to be um, either repaired or replaced within Seattle Public Schools. Next slide. Um, in addition to um, uh, playgrounds and site improvements, exterior envelope is uh, extremely important. Uh, we look at uh, the making sure that our uh, building masonry has a water repellent anti-graffiti coating on it. We are looking at painting um, those uh, exterior materials that need to be painted. Our roofs are on a 30-year cycle. Um, a recent project that was completed was at uh, West Seattle High School. Next slide. And safety and security is paramount um, for Seattle Public Schools. Uh, we, as part of BEX4, have implemented seismic improvements at 54 schools. Uh, BTA4 contemplated additional seismic improvements at additional schools. Um, BEX5 included some additional schools, and BTA5 should complete the list of seismic improvements for priority one seismic improvements at our school. In addition, this levy will include um, repairs or replacements to existing fire alarm systems, fire suppression systems, and security systems. Next slide. Um, in addition to uh, life safety improvements, we are also making improvements to the building ventilation systems, uh, air handling units, um, plumbing systems. We plan to install uh, bottled drinking um, fountains at every school within the district. Um, we'll be making some electrical service upgrades because of the work of our Department of Technology Services and going to one-to-one -one computers throughout the district. Several of our buildings need to have additional electrical um, uh, uh, amperage uh, available for the computers that are now in those schools. In addition, we'll be making lighting improvements, uh, replacing older fluorescent technology with LED technology that will help reduce our long-term um, operating or our uh, annual operating costs, and we'll be upgrading our intercom systems. Next slide. In addition to those projects, we also have some building um, uh, one off projects being proposed. We'll be making some security entry vestibule uh, improvements um, at 10 existing schools. We'll be um, designing vestibules such that when you come into the school, you'll be um, forced to enter into the office before you get access to the school so you can sign in and the and, and office administrators will know that you're within the building. We'll be making ADA accessibility improvements. Uh, we'll be redesigning some restrooms to have gender neutral restrooms. And we'll also be making some energy improvements and at the John Stanford Center, um, the central kitchen serves all of our elementary and K-8 schools. We'll be making improvements to the John Stanford uh, central kitchen um, for that staff. Next slide, please. So with that, I would like to uh, turn the presentation over to Executive Director Carlos De Valle, who heads our Department of Technology Services. Hi, and thank Hi. you for giving me the opportunity to uh, brief you in this part of the technology. My, have this, uh, Richard said, my name is uh, Carlos De Valle, I'm the Executive Director of uh, Technology Services for the district. Um, this levy uh, request uh, pretty much paved the road for a proper allocation of funds for our sustainment of technology investments and uh, the uh, effective uh, implementation of technology projects supporting high quality education. Um, Jolene mentioned it earlier, uh, a big portion of um, this levy, I mean, a big portion of uh, our cost of technology is paid by this levy is about 85%. Uh, this include about um, staffing, equipment, network, software, resources, licenses, 
just to name a few, but I'll, I'll go in detail in some of the areas that, that, that we allocate these this, uh, uh, funds. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this levy, this levy ask, uh, they, they align fairly well with the board principles that ensures uh, students and educators um, and in the district uh, have the resources they need uh, for higher high, uh, uh, quality public education experience. How I mentioned that we have allocated it in, uh, technology into three major um, uh, funding areas, the uh, student learning and support, the uh, district uh, systems and data, and um, infrastructure and security. Um, under the um, Student learning and support uh, uh, funding um, in this area is for technical support staff who provide repairs and logistics of equipment at the schools. Also, it pays for uh, digital learning support, uh, purchasing of uh, instructional software licenses, buying uh, student laptops uh, and tablets and associated uh, staff uh, equipment. Uh, for the district systems and data, this covers uh, uh, for software and assisted developers and analysts uh, and the uh, the fear and care of uh, our business financial systems, um, our learning management systems are included in this area, such as the uh, Schoology and CSOC, uh, the student information systems that are tied up that, that we use internally, uh, such as like power schools. Uh, also, the hardware and the uh, software applications and licenses, the consultants and vendor support that we have, and the associated staff that support those systems. Um, th for the infrastructure and security, this provides funding uh, for the operating costs of running the data center and the backbone infrastructure, um, cybersecurity monitoring systems, the uh, server software licenses, uh, operations and equipment, hardware maintenance. Uh, we paid also for the internet connectivity, you know, like hotspots and stuff like that. Uh, the telephone service for the uh, for the district. This is um, just a must pay bill with utility and uh and the associated staff that supports the infrastructure uh, and security next please so how richard was uh, mentioned earlier you know they increased the uh the 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 requirements for power and it's fairly true you know back in the december 19 i mean 2019 um we were starting the uh the the uh one-to-one -one, uh rollout and due to the obviously with the uh, the uh, pandemic, uh, we accelerated that one to one to everybody, and and that included not only just the uh, devices and, and the laptops, but also the hotspots, the access points, the the infrastructure that that, that we needed to support all those devices uh, had to to grow because um, uh, it was very limited bandwidth, which we did. We increased that. Uh, we doubled the. Uh, uh, we actually went from 40 gigabytes to 100 gigabytes. Um, so nearly double the number of devices that, that we needed uh, to manage and support and maintain, um, whether for students, educators, or, or for the staff. Um, increase our device um, uh, use requires uh, increased infrastructure, how I said, and, um, such as uh, wireless access points, you know, and the routers and the networks, uh, improve cybersecurity, you know, more devices, we, we, we got to uh, uh, improve the cybersecurity of it. Um, to in include the uh, technical support also, uh, as more devices and we get more trouble tickets, uh, you know, and more fixes, we had to in increase the uh, the technical support uh, folks as well. And all the tools that, that, that we have um, uh, to manage of that infrastructure. Next slide, please. So what are our priorities? Uh, based on the uh, board guiding principles, uh, we are prioritizing technology investments closest to, to the students, educators, and families. Uh, we clear vision uh, uh, for inclusivity, usability, and accessibility. For the past year, we, we've seen a lot um, required for language translation. We, we're looking into systems that provide this, this, uh, uh, this capability. Um, and usability for the teachers and then to make it uh, user friendly for, for the students and, and, and the educators. Uh, these equitable tools and uh, learning support includes, uh, for example, the uh, curriculum software, uh, digital equity program, uh, ease of use the LMS uh, uh, and educator tools, uh, and this, how I say, the support for, uh, for uh, English language learners. Uh, the IT investments seek to, re seek to realize um, equitable tools and opportunities the support students and uh, educators um, and the central office as well. Um, with that, I'm going to pass it back to uh, Richard. 
Thank you, Carlos. And then the A portion of the building technology and academics, athletics, levy concerns, um, educational programs um, throughout the district, special education, uh, science classrooms, program placement, uh, the athletic field replacement. Um, these are existing synthetic turf athletic fields. They are on a 10 year replacement schedule. Um, we know that due to their heavy use, the turf actually decreases, the turf length decreases over time. These uh, um, synthetic turf fields last for about 10 years and need to be replaced to ensure student safety. We perform GMAX testing um, throughout the life of those fields. Um, we do have field lights, as I mentioned, proposed um, at um, a couple of middle schools. And then we also have replacement of athletic equipment, um, uh, which has not been an item that has been on previous le levies. But our football sleds, our soccer goals do require replacement after um, significant use. And so that's proposed in the BTA 5 capital levy as well as arts equipment and science classroom equipment. So next slide. So our recommendation to the school board for the BTA 5 capital levy will be an investment of $765 million in our facilities and technology over a period of six years. This will address all priority one needs that have been identified by the third party consultant um, the cost for the levy will be 46 cents per thousand dollars of appraised value, which is an increase of approximately three cents uh, over the BTA 4 capital levy. I will note again that the technology department has gone to one to one um, uh, technology devices, and that is one of the reasons for the minimal increase in the uh, levy over what was um, requested in BTA 4. Next slide. So our next steps are we, uh, this is the second of two meetings that we've had this, this week. Uh, we will share your questions and comments uh, with our school board. Um, we anticipate the school board will make a decision on uh, placing the levy on the ballot on November 3rd. Um, and then the election day would be February 8th of 2022. And with that, I will pass the presentation back to Bev Redmond, who will um, open it up for questions and answers. So thank you, Bev. Absolutely. Thank you. And thank you to all of our presenters on the panel this evening. It is now time for questions and answer session. You will see two icons at the top of your screen and what you're looking for to put your uh, question out there is either to raise your hand, that icon, by pressing that, it will light up next to your, your square or you can certainly put your questions in the chat this evening. Please remember that we are focusing on the levy information tonight. If there's additional, if you have additional questions, Let's Talk is available to you online and you would go to seattleschools.org slash levies. To get started, we, also, we have a number of people who are helping us make sure that we get all of our questions answered. Tonight, I saw one already placed into the chat and it was answered along the way. SPS owns Memorial Stadium. Yes, indeed we do. And it's used by many high schools for sports as well as our graduation ceremonies. So if there are questions that you have, please feel free to raise your hand or, and we'll call upon you. And uh, other than that, you also have access to the chat this evening. If you raise your hand, I will call on you and then I will unmute you so you'll be able to talk. Thank you, Tina. Thank you, thank you, thank you. As we're moving forward, more information will be posted on the levy web page. Uh, as the district continues to gather its information, we'll continue to make sure that we keep you informed. Again, if you have questions outside of this particular forum, Let's Talk is available to you, seattleschools.org slash levies. Does the person on the phone want to make comments? I'm going to unmute you and see if um, you, you wanted to say something. Um, you may have to push star six in order to 
unmute yourself. Good, thank you. I'm good, I don't have any questions. Thank you for asking. Okay, thanks. Thank you for, for everyone that happens to be attending this evening. We certainly do appreciate your presence. I think we have a question or at least a comment. The new buildings have been beautiful, safe, and completed on time and on budget. Thank you. And thank you back to Cassandra for dropping that comment into our chat. We appreciate your support. Tina, do we have anyone that happens to have raised their hand for a question? We do not. Okay. I don't know whether we've just done a really, really good job. <laughs> we will take all of those things. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, with that, if we don't have any questions, we certainly will not belabor the evening. There, I think there is a there question one. or a hand raised there. Okay. Yep. Um, Michelle Benatow, Benatou, I will allow your mic. And you will need to unmute yourself as well. Michelle? Sorry, my phone wasn't giving me a, a chat option. Um, I had a question about the um, schoolyards, and it looks like the focus is on replacing asphalt. And I'm wondering if there's other efforts underway to green some of the play, play yard can be included in this levy or is that kind of an additional fundraising um, effort that each school needs to partake in? Thank you. So upgrades to our playgrounds are being planned on a 15 year cycle. Um, as I mentioned earlier in the levy, as part of that, there will be an evaluation of uh, whether asphalt can be removed. Our resource conservation management staff um, looks uh, at some of the implications for utilities and one of those uh, utilities is stormwater um, that we need to manage and so we are constantly looking at ways to reduce our asphalt such that we can lower our um, stormwater costs. In addition, there's um, significant research out about the importance of biophilia landscaping in the environment and the positive impacts that has on the educational program and so that is another ra uh, reason that we are looking to um, enhance um, uh, vegetation on our school sites and then the last thing i would note is asphalt is a, a significant heat island and as we address climate change reducing um, asphalt and then providing additional vegetation will help with um, making uh, reductions in, in the Earth's temperature. So there's positive um, aspect from a, a climate perspective as well. Thank you for that particular question. We also had a question drop in the chat and be answered. I'll give voice to it and then we'll see if we have any others. Uh, does the district need to ask for a waiver from the legislature since not all of these projects are enrichment projects? Uh, the answer to that, no waiver is needed, but we certainly do have to outline what the operations levy would be spent on and get ballot approval from the state. This has already been completed and approval has been granted. So Natalia, thank you for your question. Bev, I'll just add on to that, that technically it's called an enrichment levy, but the state considers anything passed with a fund enrichment. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, you know, everyone, we certainly, well, we've got another question. Are the projects, mostly finalized or is there still some planning happening? Are the projects mostly finalized or are there still, is there still some work coming, coming, shall I say? For the BTA five capital levy, uh, the projects are mostly finalized. Um, we will begin um, planning the BEC six capital levy, literally um, 
uh, within, I'm going to say, March, April timeframe of 2022, probably begin seeking input early part of 2023 on those projects. And we'll be having community meetings as well when we go to talk talk about the BEC 6 capital levy. And we'll have those meetings early so you can provide input. Okay. Another question. Is the Ming report available on the SPS website? The consultant report of all needed upgrades slash work. Is that available to us? Um, I would have to ask Becky Asensio or Tina Christensen. I know it was available at one time. I also know that it's not an ADA compliant document and is a relatively large document. And so we had to take it off the website. Uh, Becky, can you That's advise? That's correct. Um, so the main report was from 2014 and we have a more current report from 2020 that was done by Cezanne Environmental Services. Uh, they are, you know, seven, 800 page reports because they look at multiple systems in our 104 schools. Um, so I would suggest if you want some information, uh, you can go to our uh, capital planning webpage um, and find our email address and uh, let us know what report you want to see and we can pull that out. But we, we can't post them on the website because they're both non ADA accessible and it's uh, just too much data to post. Thank you. Thank you. It's an impressive document. And uh, it, Cassandra says she has looked at the 2014 report. Thank you so much for that. Uh, Ashley says, apologies if she missed it, but how does this levy address funding the Clean Schools Implementation Plan? I too will take that question and note that the, um, and I'm assuming this is concerning the clean energy resolution that the board passed uh, in February of this year. Um, and I will note that uh, this levy does have money um, set aside uh, for addressing um, some projects that will come out of a task force that uh, Seattle Public Schools is, in, is currently formatting. Um, the clean energy um, resolution that the board passed asked the district to be carbon free by 2040 and to um, not be utilizing fossil fuels. And uh, so we are forming a task force to develop a pathway that we can achieve that objective. We do have some money um, in this levy to address projects, uh, initial projects that uh, this task force might identify, we anticipate a significant amount of projects in the BEC 6 capital levy to address the clean energy resolution. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Tina, do we have any questions or any hands raised out there? We do not currently have any questions or hands raised. Um, again, the chat is available to you, or you can raise your hand and I will unmute you. Mm -hmm. We'll give it another minute or so to see if another question pops in. Again, if there aren't any other questions, we certainly do thank you for your time and we will not belabor the evening for you. But if you have questions on other items or something comes up for you as you continue throughout your evening, please know that Let's Talk Online is available to you. SeattleSchools.org slash levies is a great place to get your questions answered. Okay, again, thank you to our panel. Thank you to every guest that did chime in this evening. We appreciate all of your questions. This session has been and it will be recorded and posted after we do a little light editing on the front and the back end to get off some uh, extraneous noise and information so that you can have a clean copy of this recording. We will certainly make sure that that's available to you. With that, good night everyone. Stay safe. <laughs>